What order are the numbers going? So I know that we're starting to record. Please just tell me. Charles, you're you're recording now, aren't you? That's why you're taking a sip from your cup. I hate you so much. Welcome to another episode of the Whiskey Entitled. In this episode, we'll be talking about uh, whiskey events online. They're just like regular whiskey events, but they're online. So the biggest difference is drinking whiskey through your computer monitor and then smelling through your computer monitor and judging the color through your computer monitor That's okay. and then tasting through your computer monitor. Like every time I taste my computer monitor, I don't taste the whiskey. I seem to taste like TFTP pixels and, and dust. you know, IPS pixels and dust. And you don't dust your monitors, Charles. And like, I just nope. don't taste anything that I'm supposed to be tasting from the whiskey. And I think whiskey tastings online are getting better. So let's explore that. frozen he's stuck no nope. oh he blinked he can't he lost it i did lost i blinked <laughs> i could not blink yeah you tried oh, I, I could not blink you tried you tried i did hey, hey. But yeah well uh, yay we're all back we're back from our uh spring we break time out having a little fun time um but yeah no um since this is a whiskey show and bianca i haven't heard your voice yet uh what's in your glass well, honestly, I hate to disappoint, but I kind of needed a, a, a break today, so I'm drinking mm. lemonade. Lemonade? Not spiked lemonade? Just regular <laughs> lemonade? No, sweet, just or is old it... fat. It's Sweden. It's from Publix. It's like the the generic brand, and it's delicious. It's my favorite. Mm, so there you go. If you're not drinking whiskey, you're drinking lemonade. Ooh, I just spilled some. And Walter, what's uh, what's? She's here? obviously had enough lemonade in my glass <laughs> today. It was wild is the Sagamore Rye tequila finish that I'm finally trying out because they sent it to me tequila three weeks finish. ago and we talked about taking pictures and I haven't done anything because they didn't send me a full-size bottle so I've been less than enthused, but interesting. Huh. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Interesting. interesting. Because it is just MGP finish in tequila barrels. But it, it okay. is interesting. So I want to try it. Interesting. Did it tell you what kind of tequila it was or...? No, it actually doesn't say what kind of tequila. Oh, Sagamore Port Finish. Hello there, Delmarva. Ooh, uh, so for me, I'm uh, sipping on the Abelauer 18 with my fancy hand tag that you could have gotten for free back in, what, a couple months ago? Yeah, Ooh. we told everybody on Instagram that those were free. I wonder free. how angry they were with that bulk. Believe order. me, every time I see something that's free in the whiskey world online, I'm posting it on Instagram stories so that everybody can go get a free one. Yeah. I immediately messaged Charles. I was like, Charles, you need this. Yep, got it. And then I made a no reason. story. I was like, everybody. You didn't tell me anything. You didn't tell me anything. I posted it to so. stories. What do you, what do you want me to yeah. do? Just like that the Highland Park. Me. Oh. All right, next okay. I check your, I check your stories. Do you not check my stories? Uh-oh. Awkward. But no, I'm, to be honest, I'm waiting for uh, Highland Park <laughs> to be uh, doing that free shipping again. or Yeah, free shipping again. Yeah. I already bought a jacket and everything else from highland Dude, Park. I imagine don't know how much money they would, would lose buy. if they did that again because we posted oh, that they're shit gonna and... oh yeah no i was yeah no we posted Everyone it like it bro everybody bought something and we were like look <laughs> free shipping around the world let's yeah. do this Balls that's and crazy how long was that was that was that last year yeah around uh Christmas yeah they time. did it twice and uh we took advantage of all of it oh hell yeah <laughs> nice tweet i really need to start paying attention to your your stories guys it's okay that you don't i get it i get it it's boring just for the, for free, the stuff. free stuff it's, it's not free stuff. i mean it's not it's not uh it's not boring at all <laughs> um so since we were away for a while i'm assuming you guys have quite a few bottles that you guys picked up did you guys pick up any yes i picked up one but i didn't pick it up uh walter what did you pick me. up you well, already what know what i got get? we could actually literally all three of us could hold this bottle up and we could talk about hey, it yeah. i don't know can we we're gonna talk about the charity that's behind hey, it or... i paid for this you guys got it i did not remember. pay for this remember that they so... just sent it to me I can't wait to I try even, it. I, I, I haven't even cracked pictures. it. I need to open it too. And you know what? If it's good, the worst part is like I'm gonna go buy another one. Exactly. If they still have it, right? But yes. I don't know and in did. case it's My limited to five. Oh, did it really? It's limited to 594 bottles, which is really limited. That's like a large share. Yeah. But in case anybody doesn't know, I will explain now. Uh, so basically, this was for first responders, children organization. Um, first responder children had like 
they obviously help first responders children's when first responder parents die or yeah. first responders parents you know get injured and stuff and they need money or they fall into hardship mm-hmm. um but they're doing an especially special one highland park teamed up with scotch in the city to donate fifteen thousand dollars to the organization because they have an emergency covid19 fund yep. for kids that have lost parents to covid19 or fallen on hardship because of it so yep. they've been helping that i think the money's already donated though so you don't have to go buy these bottles to support it but it's like i said in a post yesterday like Highland Park put their money where their heart is. So if you want to support a company that obviously is willing to give buku bucks to organizations, that's what's up. For sure. That's Absolutely. interesting. Thing. Like, so we have a bottle that's a distillery exclusive. Mm-hmm. And we have this bottle. And it's interesting. At the back, it says bottled for the friends of Scotch in the City. So that's pretty cool. It has it on the back as well. The back little. Yeah. They have back front. Yeah, you're right. I'm very curious to try this. I'll be honest with you. Highland Park, for me, is one of those uh distilleries i either love or hate every single one that i've tried i haven't found it hasn't been consistent for me so it's okay. so oh. but maybe i just need to let it like grow on me i'm gonna try it again it's been a little while it's been probably like a year or more since i've tried highland park <laughs> and uh yeah so i'm gonna try this one i'm excited for it wow it's more it's it's stronger than the uh the cast strength the one we have dude is it yeah it's, it's like 60 65 64. this is 60 the one we got so it's stronger i mean and less aged so, so yeah. fun fact, can I share a fun fact about this? So I took this with yeah. me on uh, to the beach a couple of days ago, like uh, okay. yesterday. And I was, okay. I took it because I want to take some, some shots, whatever, like pictures of, uh, like of the bottle. Mm-hmm. Ended up being that I forgot to take a beach bag. So I actually ended up like when I went to the actual beach to enjoy some sun outside, I used this and I was walking around like the lobby and everything like that with this. So it was very versatile you know goes to show you you know you can use every single part of a whiskey packaging there you go i actually do like the little hemp looking it is a nice purse it is it is it is a nice purse not only does it carry your bottles but it will carry your your sunglasses and your wallet there you go um any other uh (laughs) bottles did you guys pick or anything else trying to find the stuff i have but Mm. so i so I did receive another bottle, which I feel awful because I haven't purchased anything in quite some time. So I'm gonna carry this one, which I think. So I, I'm a big fan of Glendalough. So I received this uh, in March. What Glendalough? I've never seen you post anything about Irish whiskey company Glendalough. <laughs> really? Are you joking? <laughs> I'm totally joking. Yeah. Okay, I was like, what? Which one's that yeah, one? So I love Sar- that sarcasm one. sandwich. This is, the, this is the pot still, and okay. so this is one that you when you buy a bottle, they'll actually. Uh, plant a uh, tree and okay. in your name. Kind of like the angel. So I really like that. Yeah. Do you get a picture of the tree or is it just like. Yes, you do. You do. You actually get like a, not a picture, you get like a certificate and then uh, of where they planted it and a little bit of information. So it's and then like I guess draft that you guys got, right? So you give them money and then they take pictures of this tree and send it to you? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. A picture of the tree. No, no, they plant it. They like oh, a seed certificate. gets planted. A certificate. And then yeah, they give you a certificate? certificate? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Just making sure it's not like OnlyFans, but for trees. No. No, no, no. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not like tree. panning the tree. They're not right. panning the tree and showing its curves. Oh, <laughs> right. I remember they're, not, they're not doing that. I remember you guys got that um, the giraffe thing from. Is it yes. Green Drawback? Yeah, I let mine expire. What no, happened? No, no. Oh, uh, it was uh, Glen Morangi. Glen Morangi. Glen Morangi, yeah. yeah. Did you guys mm-hmm. um, get any it more information last on that? Year. Yeah, no. I followed my giraffe for the one year, and then when it expired, I just. I let him go. <laughs> you let him go. I had Wonky. What was it? What was your name? Coffee Bean. Coffee Bean. Aww. That's funny. I wish you guys kept going because that would have been fun to to watch and maybe. Can you can yeah, you actually track it fun. where it is? Yeah, they, no, no, so, no, no. No, but theirs is like OnlyFans. They send you pictures and let you know yeah, that you're yeah. doing all right. <laughs> okay. Fair you enough. know, you give them money. They send you pictures. Everything yeah. is turning into OnlyFans. That's what I've decided. Yeah. It's probably one thing that came out of COVID, right? OnlyFans. <laughs> Um, for what me, about I, you, Charles? Um, I got some samples um, about a week ago. Did a Westward tasting, which was interesting. Mm. They had um, one of the guys who did a um, an interesting thing with the yeast. So he used rye, I think rye bread yeast for distilling. It came out real, in, uh, real interesting with the fact that the mouthfeel was super velvety. So I was like almost an incline to that pappy kind of velvet uh, mouthfeel mm-hmm. but sadly the taste wasn't there 
Like it wasn't oh, okay. it wasn't like um let's say the westward flavoring with that maltiness with that mouthfeel. It felt a bit lighter. So I I'm hoping that they keep working with that guy that does the breads and stuff. So really interesting. Got it. And then uh, they did have a uh a rye uh whiskey blend and a double cast uh or double malted blend, which is interesting too. A double malted blend was pretty fun. It's basically instead of a single malt, two malts together. So Yeah. Sounds yeah. interesting. But uh besides and that's was kinda that, sorry. Was that your favorite? Yeah, the double mm-hmm. one was my favorite. Besides the regular one that I think most of you guys have a bottle of. The regular release. Um mm-hmm. that was the uh my favorite, the double one. But uh yeah, and that kinda brought me to the the question or the the topic of this week since Bianca, I've been seeing you do a lot of in person um tastings. And because Miami Wally, is open. And then I know Wally, we've been, well, actually, all three of us have been on some online tastings as well. Yeah. Just want to talk about it because, like, with COVID restrictions, you know, opening <clears> up <throat> now, a lot more people getting the vaccine. I'm personally thinking we're going to see more in person whiskey um, tastings. But I'm just kind of wondering what you mean, guys think about it. As life goes back to normal, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, but like, think about yeah. the accessibility we've had with some people from like the UK having these online tastings, the distillers and um, like people oh, but they were cast and stuff. They were kind of doing that before, right? But it's just like everything got kicked up a notch because yeah. mm-hmm. now everything's online. So everybody, yeah. I, I, it's better than it was at the beginning. Remember when everyone was competing and yeah. there was nonstop live streams, and I was just like Instagram closed. Like this is horrible. At least now they're being a little much. more discriminated. It was way too much. It was too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think now it's like a little bit more controlled. And I think it's a little bit yeah. more organized. But yeah. I think, like, Charles, what you said, like, you were asking about, like, what my thoughts are now with um, going back into uh, live tastings and then versus, you know, ha- pretty much a whole year of just doing virtual tastings. So it's kind of, it feels strange. It's okay. I, I've been, honestly, I've been getting a lot of, like, virtual experience uh, fatigue, if I just overall. Besides, you know, you know, so I think that it's because it's become almost it feels like a requirement now like okay um you have to if you're in like you have to be on you have to participate you actually have to like speak a lot of times and in, in, in these tastings versus and there's a lot more focus in these little boxes if especially we share your your video and i don't know i just feels i don't feel as engaged anymore lately um as i used to in the beginning of the the whole virtual tasting um like like start of everybody doing all these virtual tastings. the pros has been like you said um we're able to connect from people with people from all over the world and maybe um have experiences that we couldn't have if we were in person because we would have to travel or they would have to come to us whatever but uh, when it comes to going back and positioning back into live tastings um i did so i've done I let I've led one larger one um, myself, where uh, which I which was uh, like about two months ago, and yep. it honestly was very nerve wracking, believe it or not. Uh, it was after almost a year and a half from like hosting my last uh, in person event yep. to doing that one. It felt like kind of like oh my god, how do I interact with people in person? <laughs> you know, it's like it feels like you feel like awkward. But and this, but it felt nice and refreshing. It felt good because you actually read people's emotions better. It's, yeah. it's instead of like wondering like why is Wally acting like a robot all the time? You little oh because they're actually like interested in the whiskey. <laughs> you know, like how did all you right. feel about just like interactions? Because like um, we've been on some um, Zoom tastings together, and it seems like a mm-hmm. lot of times with the discussion portion, people seem to be very quiet, very reserved, or just kind of into whatever they're tasting or whatever. But when you're yeah. in an open space, you feel as though that there's a lot more interaction, a lot more people asking questions. Like, do you feel there's like a big difference? So it's interesting. Okay, so I kind of did the same tactic in person that I started doing with my virtual, uh, whenever I was vo- uh, hosting virtual tastings, which was just calling out a random people. Like in Zoom, you can call out random people. They kind of like, they'll answer, right? But in person, I felt like this, this person that I called out, the two people who I did ask them to participate, they kind of were like shell shocked. They didn't know what to do. They, they, it was like, oh no, you put me on the spot. And I think that it was kind of, I felt awkward like trying to get them. So I don't think I'll ever do that again. I'll ask people to participate willingly instead of forcing them. It's just, again, like I feel like 
like we're all overall transitioning back into the real world slowly and it's it's uh it's just a different dynamic uh, in person than even what it used to be before covid okay i got you. I mean that makes sense yeah for sure because because mm-hmm. humans are going to interact differently right and like yeah you definitely can't have side conversations when you have a real room full of real people and you're not really paying yeah. 100% attention and it's not something you can do in zoom in zoom you can send like the little notes where you're like Kimberly Curry, are you really eating dinner right now? She's, She's like, like, yes. I'm always eating food. And I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? It looks so good. I'm so hungry. <laughs> you know, it, it is interesting with the side conversations. But, like, so when the tasting I was in, um, it was very interesting, like, the, the things we were tasting, a lot of experimental stuff. But there was that lull near the end where next, no one wanted to talk and no one wanted to ask questions. And it was mm-hmm. hard because, like, I, I could tell a lot of them were just like, hey, I'm just here for the whiskey to drink and then I want to bolt. But like yeah. all these questions, yeah. and you don't, and like I did ask a few questions, but I didn't want to take over the whole stream or whatever, right? Because like, you know, you want to ask these questions. You want to ask like, why did you choose this rye bread um, yeast in this one, and so on and so forth. But you know, like that's when I would have a Damn. side conversation, right? Like yeah. in real life. But um, yeah, no, I just it's sad because like that's some of the best parts for me, the tasting experience where you kind of separate, like everyone kind of drifts off into little corners and starts talking and meeting new people. And yeah. So, um, I, ha- I did have the opportunity to do, to attend one that was not hosted by me, like, uh, for angels envy recently, which I'm going to, I'm going to actually go to a dinner this coming Sunday for them with, uh, um, the, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot his name. The angels Envy co-founder, uh, founder. Oh my Dave. God. This time. Uh, is his name last name with an John. Henderson? Henderson? No. Dave, H- Dave Henderson. Here. Yeah, Henderson. There we go. Harry Henderson. Uh, <laughs> I forgot his name. I can't believe it. Uh, I'm going I'm to remember it. So he's going to be in that dinner. But one thing is, it was nice that the brand ambassador for Angels Envy like, hosted a very small, like, um, tea at the lobby. Uh, Wes, yes, Wes, there we go, Wes, yes, there we go. Thank you, Google. Uh, <laughs> um, so what was interesting is, okay, whatever you're doing, Charles, just stop doing it right now. Oh, it's it's exactly it. Exactly. I like what he's doing. I love what he's I'm doing. I'm trying to adjust. <laughs> it's not distracting at all. <laughs> so point being is that it was nice because it was only like two people per table, and he the and he would actually come in and and talk about the three different uh, whiskeys we were trying, which was the bourbon, the rye, and then the cast strength one. And he paired it with the, with some chocolates. But he taught, gave us each was like two tables of eight, okay. uh, two pe- like eight tables of two people sitting. So he came in and personalized the experience for each of us. And we okay. were wearing masks, and that was kind of nice. The only problem was that we weren't allowed to mingle with each other, which is what we what you were gonna say. Yeah. Like we, that was fun of the networking thing. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. That was a it was a mm-hmm. chocolate pairing for you guys. That's the in person. Yeah, yeah. yes, that's always good. that was really nice. You know, and like, the rye was my favorite. It was delicious. I personally hope that there are more online tastings after this whole COVID thing kind of goes away, just because like you have access to like I think we we're talking about before like distillers, um, people are working in the sales department or the marketing department or mm-hmm. other parts of the distillery, just understanding their point of view. I think we just yeah. have more access to those people now, but I yeah. do miss those personal, um, like personalized, like per city, what they're trying to show you, what kind of thing they're going to bring in. So mm-hmm. hope there's a hybrid model coming soon. I mean, honestly, yeah. we just so all too. were, we were all in that one tasting for a type of spirit that is not really, I know for me personally, it's not really my thing. Honestly, yep. And, um, trying it in person with a brand ambassador like trying cognac in person with a brand ambassador in california to me was very weird because in person i think they expected people to be more enthusiastic about cognac so yeah. they expected mm. more interaction and they expected more questions they expected more stuff and i'm sitting there and i know that they're trying to get other markets like people who drink whiskey because yes. we spend money and all this but like i'm like eh, uh wrong people but on the online one we were sitting there, and I didn't feel bad at all when it was like, we're going to have happy hour now and talk about cognac. And I was like, deuces. Actually, Charles left. For, you both left me there, which is great. Because oh, I turned around, and I looked at the screens, and I was like, I don't know any. I mean, I know some of these people, but I'm out. I literally didn't even say anything. 
You guys just tired. left and didn't say anything. And I was like, Oh no, no, no. Yeah, I no. Did, I did. I did say bye to Jazz. I said bye to Jazz. Yeah, I literally was just like, I'm just gonna sign out. Of I was Zoom. waiting for some other people to bolt, and then they're like, everyone started bolting. I'm like, all right, it's my time to yeah. go. No, you, you definitely know. It, it was got late. more I was obvious. Tired. I will yeah. admit though that it was fun having that comedian. She was different, but it was nice. Yeah. Oh, change I of loved pace. her. She was hilarious. Aaron. Yeah, she was a nice was change funny. of pace. She like, awesome. um, I know Jazz was trying to set it up and stuff, and then they kind of messed it up with their DoorDash delivery or whatever. But um, no, it was it was nice to kind of break the ice. I feel as though that it was I want to say serious, but it was like definitely like a lot of information getting shot at you, and then that kind of broke the mood. Yeah. But, yeah, and there were some cognac enthusiasts there, or at least people that had that before, sure. which was great. Mm -hmm. But like you mentioned before, like it's it's not our cup of tea. Like we're doing it just to branch out and learn something different. Yeah, but it's yeah. funny because like the one cognac, they were like, "Here's another one of our cognacs." I was like, "I like this one the best." And then they were like, "Just go to our website and you'll find it somewhere around you." I went to their website; they don't even have the one that Is I like the on their. No, the elegance one. Oh, okay. The like, the one, elegance one, to me, tasted out. the most interesting. And I was like, this is pretty good. That was the, that was the second one? No, uh, it was the one they mixed for a cocktail. It was a second cocktail. Okay. okay. They, they just, like, chucked it in a cocktail. And I was like, this is really good. Then I went to their yeah. website, and it literally isn't even listed on their website. And I was like, oh, dang. nice. So I was like, you know, I well, should just go buy a bottle of Camus somewhere else. And I went online to look, yeah. and they only have expensive ones, like 150 bucks yeah. or $5,000. There was no, like, middle gram. I was like, where are the $60 bottles they talked about? Yeah, no. Real question, like a real question. Now, now about like, have you gotten to the point where I feel like um, we have to be more selective? Like not we. I'm not, say, I'm not saying in general. Like I'm not saying that the cognac was not a good experience. It was wonderful. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed learning about something new. I, I don't know if I'm, it's not my drink of choice, but we all know this. I like, guess that's a that's our whiskey community. <laughs> but um, what I'm trying to say is, I've actually go. I have started saying no. And thank you for the, the 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 invitation. I don't want you to send me free samples because. I think I just need to be more choosy with my time, like sitting in front of the screen and, and tasting. I want to actually be with my family. I want to yeah. other things. And it's starting to, like, like I used to enjoy going to in-person tastings because it was like, I made a thing out of it. It's like, not just saying that, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you know, you, you go and you're like, okay, you have something else to look for. But literally I'm like, this is my office. And then I'm gonna be stuck here sitting for another few hours while we're taking, well, except for now I'm drinking in my office. So it's like, okay. I don't know. I gotta be more selective. That's how I feel lately. Yeah. No, like I so probably not tastings in general, but for me the biggest thing is having the tastings at the distillery. Like that's probably where I'm gonna try to invest most of my money and time now. Is once this COVID is, you know leaves and if companies have opportunities to travel to those distilleries, that's I'm gonna take that as as much as I can because. I do miss it. Um, I know well, when too. we had to Scotland, it was really fun, like, just sitting down. Even though it felt like it was a chore for them because they're like, we can't drink with you. But here, drink in front of us. So, <laughs> which was always a weird thing, but due to the laws and they can't drink on, on premise. But, like, maybe, I don't know, next time we'll, we should block a few days off and actually meet the people outside of the work environment if possible. That would be yeah. good. That's a good idea. Would, Offer yeah. it not a bad idea for sure yeah. i think i agree 100 percent with bianca when she said to be a little more picky and choosy um sometimes i just say yes because the people are like there's no people who work at marketing teams that aren't nice and so yeah. you yeah. get into a conversation you know everybody's vibing and then all of a sudden it's like hey so do you want to try okay sure like yeah me too the box that I got in the mail today, I'm sitting there and I'm like, and I asked you guys if you guys are doing the Four Roses small batch too. Yeah. And like, I'm only half excited about it because I recently tried Four Roses blind in a mystery whiskey and it was... Dude, you're not a fan. It was lettuce water. It was so bad. <laughs> I, think, I, just I like, think you talked uh, about this like, what, three weeks ago. You're like, I'm not a fan of this. Yeah, the only one I've ever had that I liked, somebody sent me a sample of the Al Young and like, that was really good. And I was like, wow. I heard that one's good. Yeah, it, it's, but it's like classic bourbon notes, just done mm -hmm. really well. And so it wasn't magical, yeah. but it was good. But I've had two single barrels. I've had now their $26 bottle, whatever that stuff is made out of. And like, it's, mm, you know, but, but this marketing team was so nice. I was like, let's do it. Let's, let's, yeah, send me. Rock and roll. Let's yeah, let's I'm, kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of the spot where I like, I'm just going to be willing to try anything just because I want to get yeah. that palette going. But, yeah, I'll try it. But I'll, I'll definitely, like, I tell brands, like, if it's on a full bottle, like, hey, I, I can't put it on my feed or it's going to be hard for me and maybe I'll put it in stories or whatever. 
but like I, I'm up front. Like yeah. even with um with uh the cognac thing that we did, I told him, okay, I don't think I'm gonna put my feed unless it's like a bottle or it was a mini, right? Like designed mini. Yeah, they, just, they like, sent mini. six minis, even though somebody promised me on the side the person organizing it that they would send me a full-size bottle that's a whole different issue i wasn't just telling anybody but since he didn't send it Boom. i'm not telling anybody except for everybody <laughs> but anyways no but like i said i did like the one bottle so much that i wanted to buy one but it's not available anywhere so yeah. i don't know like do i want to take a picture and be like cool thanks for the tasting yes yeah will it probably just be a story with a bunch of minis in it probably yeah. am i trying to win that 200 dollars gift certificate no nope. i'm all right yeah i'll be okay i'm i'm i saw that i'm like yeah no like P- paying people a hundred bucks or something to post, I get it. But like, making them challenge each other and stuff like that, I'm like, it's not. I don't like that. No, I, I that I don't like. And the, then the answer's subjective, right? Like, who yeah. picks which one's the best? Or you know, there's a lot of people there that had a lot more following than most of us. Like, that just skews numbers already compared to another nice photo or whatever. So. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 and they don't do that. No, no, no. They actually, I, I don't know. I don't think that's. I, I don't uh, know. So. That's not. That's yeah. not the. But also, like, um, it's... go ahead. It's not. I mean, I, I just know for a fact that they're not cho- it's not chosen by the most likes. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know, but I'm just like, in my head, like, like, it's all subjective, like Wally said, right? Like, it's just mm-hmm. whoever has, you know, whoever has a diff- different eye than anyone else, so. Mm-hmm. But yes, Ben, there was a challenge part of it. Yeah. There was, like, a list I mean, of things. You get a bottle I, of money. That was actually one of the questions. You, to be honest with you, I actually appreciate the fact that um, they're trying to in- get people to get be engaging, engaged with you know the product a little bit more, everything like that. I just think that, like going back to virtual tasting, it's just hard right now to like what what else can we do in order to keep people engaged during an online uh, tasting right now? Like you know what do we do? Like does somebody have to juggle? Like you can't you know like like what more? How do I we think, get people to participate more? I think what you mentioned too, like so on my work Zoom calls and stuff like that, we actually branch out into like mini groups and stuff like that and i think that's you know it's hard when you see 30 40 people and trying to you know a lot of people not confident enough to you know speak their tasty notes like even i'm at the point where i'm like i taste this weird thing should i say something or should i not like absolutely people a lot of people judge so like having these smaller groups of three or four kind of people have open discussions you know like and talk about it and then even just say hey like this is our this is what we think or whatever because like you know what's so fun What's right. so funny, Charles? You just reminded me, like in the tasting of the uh, Angels Envy. Yeah. I was just so excited to be in in person that I think I was talking too much. You know, yeah. like when you, like it's almost I don't know if it was like excitement or like like social awkwardness. I was just like <laughs> over talking. Yeah, someone outside <laughs> so of my family. Let's talk. I haven't oh. been outside of the house in months. Yeah. Human. <laughs> so, I I remember like like and like his boss is like sitting next to me, and then like she's like, oh. You like that bigger? Yeah, I like it. It tastes like it reminds me of when you walk into Tire Kingdom. It tastes like rubber. <laughs> hey, some might, people like must like rubber. And she looked at me like, and I was so excited to tell her that. But Charles, you just even in taste it. Just say what it, what it you know like what it reminds you of. Yeah, it sounds like you're at an art. Sounds like you had an art big tasting. No, I, to be honest, like for me, it's just like a lot of times, you know, there's so many people there, and you're like, you know, you want the conversation to keep going, right? Like. Especially when mm-hmm. um, the guy that we were ta- uh, in the cognac thing, who's just talking his notes around, you you don't want to stop him, you know, because then you're like, mm-hmm. oh shit. Then you, you can see other people in the camera. They're like, because cameras were supposed to be on. Some people are just yeah. like, I'm not interested in this. If this is gonna last another thirty minutes, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. So like, I mean, you can see it. You no, know, there's some people. <laughs> uh, this is just me being honest. Like, you can see some people are just like, it's a, like even Jazzy even asked me like, all right, Charles, are you okay? Quiet. I'm like, no, I'm just like, this is interesting. I'm trying to absorb this information, but. This is not I, – I'm not here to promote cognac. I'm not here – you know, this is not my thing. But I would like to understand the cognac notes and, like, the grapes that they use. Like, especially the grapes that he said that couldn't be used into wines but could be used in cognac. Right. Because if I taste that flavoring in whiskey, oh, they use maybe use a cognac no, barrel. Now I know what a cognac barrel tastes yeah. like or whatever mm-hmm. and so on. It's always difficult because true. you're looking at these brands who are trying to do different things with – each of these tastings so some are making it fun and it's just an event you can just go to like yeah i will never forget aberlauer's new year's oh, eve yeah. thing like that will forever to me be a really fun thing that they did because it was like or the burns night sorry burns night, yeah. and the burns night the burns night no the burns night it was so much fun it wasn't for you didn't have to have cameras on it wasn't for it was like, you to sit there was it wasn't for them to look at their numbers and go oh we have this many people watch it wasn't for any of that it was literally, guys, we set up an entire event that we would have done 
in person, if we could have done it in real life, you know, Thomas Tardy from Flatiron up in New York, like helped with the whole thing. They got a venue, they got musicians, they got all this stuff. They organized it. It was so well done. And it was just a great production. And it was like watching. It was beautiful. It was like watching a movie and less like watching a marketing, you know, spiel where somebody just, you know, word salad garbage coming out of word vomit, vomit just everywhere. Just telling you about things like they're making you fall in love with the brand. I, yeah, I think they did a really good job with that because they took away the whole ah uh, like it you wasn't can even fall in love with the the brand. It was like I, I want to experience that. Right, it was just a fun you know, culture. Just a fun it was event, a, exactly. It was a heritage. It, it just it was, it was like, a guy with a backpack, nice. right too. And it was less like yeah, yeah. You're, it was less like you're going to an event online where you feel like wait a minute. So I'm gonna be very, very blunt. Uh, I didn't want to say blunt, Honest. and I didn't want to say frank, and I don't want to say a, a huge use of candor, but when you're having an event, at some point when everybody in the event hears that you've started a company that specifically <laughs> does events in the spirits world with the spirits company that you're bringing on board, like then it starts to feel like, wait, am I just part of a marketing ploy and yeah. that's the only reason I'm here? Yeah. And if that's the case, if you'd said that from the start, I would be less inclined to be here because if I knew you're just using me because you see numbers and you need those so some company can shell out money to send you stuff, like I just tell us that from the beginning so it doesn't feel like right in the first 10 minutes you hear like, oh, and by the way, I've started a company where we just do marketing for spirits and now you guys are all part of it. And it's like, wait, I that's not what I signed up for. I thought we were just doing a tasting. And I'm not saying that it was shady, but it just feels like marketing instead of feeling like an experience. But don't you think that is, with everything anyway? Like, you no, know I'm not it using, like, it's not usually that blunt. blunt? Okay. So I, I appreciate the bluntness. I appreciate the directness, but I would, I don't understand what you mean. Like you would have wanted to I, before. Before, correct. I would have yeah. wanted to know before, not after, because when you do it during the fact, especially during the fact, it was just like, wait, well, what? And if that's the case, maybe, like, why wouldn't you have invited people under that umbrella <clears throat> if that's the new umbrella that you're marketing under? Instead, I was just like, wait, something changed. I don't like this. And I'm not mm. trying to sound autistic, but that's exactly what it sounded like just now. No, I, to be honest, like I don't we, like change. We yeah. thought we thought about it before too, like just grouping up and stuff like that, and becoming like a more correct. It's different if people are voluntary, group. like voluntarily getting into it because hey, we want to start a group where we can do this and we can get cool tastings and we can work with brands to promote the cool things. Then you can do it. You can either do it really well, where you have a marketing company that you know works together with the people, or you can do it really poorly, mm-hmm. like a marketing company that doesn't do a good job working with people, and then everybody who's part of that marketing campaign complains about how bad it is. I feel like that just happened recently and it's hilarious. So just just be forward. Just be honest with people. Let them know what's going on. Don't just be like, hey, I wanted to invite you to this thing. If you're literally inviting somebody to a thing because you're using them, you're not inviting them to a thing, you're using them. So it is I I don't know, it just it that to me felt a little dishonest. So I don't know. I feel like it's been done for so many years by other people in in, in our whiskey community that it's like Maybe I'm not jaded enough. I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to it. It doesn't even phase me. Like I, I wasn't even bothered by it. I think it's a, is that the point where I think you guys were talking about it earlier, how like you now have to be more picky or more choosy on which yeah. brands or which things you guys do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. Sure. And I think that's that's what we're like. I don't know there are some times where like all right, you really curious on a brand or a brand new activations happening that you're gonna toss your hat into it and be like, all right, I'm gonna do whatever they need me to do. Yeah, but, that's but, different. That's because yeah. that's a mutual thing, right? So yeah. when it's mutual, when it's mutually beneficial, you're getting something and they're getting something. When it's not mutually beneficial is when somebody is telling you you're getting maybe a little bit of this, but we're getting all of this, this. from you because yeah. of it. Like, right. hmm, that's yeah. not that's not a team effort. That's not a collaboration. That's just you know somebody else using your resources for whatever their end yeah. gains are, and that's not I don't know. That's not cool. And that's and you know so like this is where I'm hoping that with the transition with the whole covid stuff happening that we keep like the fun abelauer type environment understanding stuff that you can't do physically because of the fact that let's say they're in scotland or in taiwan or in kentucky or whatever keep that as an online Mm -hmm. presence because i think a lot of people are used to it now and then the 
the phys uh, the physical tastings where you go to a bar setting or you bring a brand ambassador or, or somebody from Scotland over, you know, have that more impactful thing like, hey, this we're bringing this person in or we're bringing this ambassador in that's not usually here. This is the lineup. You know, let's let's go and do this thing. So, I'm hoping there's that both okay. thing because I don't feel as though there was that many online tastings. More like maybe private clubs before COVID. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping they use this muscle, more social that's, media muscle. That's actually a really good idea, Charles. Like, yeah. yes, because you have people who are at the physical event, like Bianca going to this Angels, like, Envy event. But do both. Have a oh, hybrid small, events. Yeah, have, yeah, have a happen. small team there. Oh, will they? Yeah, we already do that with the Scott Society 305. Oh, that's yeah. oh, oh, all right. Ahead of the curve. Never done that. Ahead of the curve. All right. Calm down. No, that's a good idea. <laughs> To do yeah, both. We, that we way... do it so just that way people can start to interrupt you. Yeah, involve Walter. people. Yeah. Yeah, we were able to involve like people who okay, yeah, Miami, yeah, we get to have people like in, we do a smaller in person events and it may make other people uncomfortable even even in Miami to attend it in person, but you have the option to purchase your own kit, it will send it to you. And if you oh, want to cool. attend virtually. So there's Is like that a Shane Zoom in thing? Chicago. Is that Instagram thing? Smart. The... No, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Do all that of way it. It's a little bit more. It's a, a little bit. Uh, well, you know, like you could, we could do like Instagram Live, but then you won't get the kit, right? So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, think, I just want to make think it a little bit great. more cool. Do you guys have like a full-on kit, like camera setup and sound and everything? And. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you should mm -hmm. plug that, and if you could send me a link on where people can find that, I'll put that down below. Yeah. yeah. Well, that it's sounds probably really nice. Scotch dot com. Yeah, it's gonna... <laughs> exactly. Like For this next one, we won't, we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna. I can ask if we're gonna put it on live, but I don't think so. We didn't have. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. I bet you guys have a, a lot of connection with stores that could send it, so it's legally, you know, able to. Do you know, that. no, that's that's actually what exactly what we do. We, it's a um, a cigar lounge that actually we there partner up with, and they they help us get, uh, get those out. Mm -hmm. awesome. That's 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 real cool. I think more and more people like you guys should start doing that more dope all righty well guys um that's it for the show I, I know we took a little bit of a detour but overall i think that we're all in agreement that you know we're excited for in-person type style tastings hopefully we all all three of us get to meet each other maybe even do a live stream or yes. take that trip to kentucky or scotland yeah i would like I to look forward to it. I, I just want to actually Charles I'm dying to meet you so one day somehow we're going to do a in person tasting even if it's just the two of us sitting down boom no I love <laughs> that there, don't worry Walter we'll invite you don't worry okay and, yeah. well, well, like you come. I have, well, a, I, have come. A, I have a meme for this boom and on that hey guys uh, Delmar Tolv Ben thank you guys so much for uh, uh, and Cody thank you so much for uh, hanging with us chatting we yeah. apologize for not being last good. week. That was more my bad. Um, had stuff come up. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in every week. Uh, please feel free to reach us uh, on our Instagram handles. You guys know what they are. They already um, know. I know. Just thankful. Don't talk to them like they're noobs. Thanks, Pete the Cat, for saying hi to everybody. There you go. Hello. Hello, Pete the Roger, Cat. What's up? Yeah, wave. <gasps> it's waving back. Oh, here. <laughs> All right. But on that note, guys, thank you so much. What are you picked the wrong time to sign in? Unless you've been here Walter. the whole time. Hey, Drew. And Drew's probably been here the whole time too. Yeah. Hey, Who knows? Drew, just listening. Let us. Just talking.